And welcome back to another episode <laughs> of Gavin Wu in the Stew. What episode are we? I think this is episode 8. Episode 8. Thanks to our good man Eugene, so all good there. Today's a little bit different as well. We are going live on Stephen's Facebook. Yeah. So if uh, any of that world out there have some questions, get some stuff over. But today we are, we're we're going to have a, a general sort of chat about some stuff that we like talking about when it comes to music. Shall we start with what we covered quickly last week? Yes. Yeah? Yes. So last we week we looked at warm-up sets. We did. Um, and the video's actually on uh, on YouTube just now. Um, but I, what else did we cover? We also label submissions. Label submissions, of course. That so we was covered it there. So go and check we it. We did, we did. And what was the other thing? It was like the, using social media. Using social media. That was. I almost forgot. Thank you for putting me on the spot. <laughs> I, I, that's why I was asking you. I was like, uh, no. But seriously, it's a, it's a good wee video. We've put it up online. It's been up for a couple of days. So mm-hmm. go and check it. The aim of these is, of course, to add little nuggets of value, have general conversations, um, not too tippy. No, I guess really for us just, just, just to get our mental brains out there. Aye, just to unleash the madness. Yes, like um, the music. Aye, so Gallon Wu is all about unleashing the madness. Um, we're going to get Stuart from Second Phase in, who's actually sitting here, he's part of the Behind team. the scenes team today. Behind, he's behind the scenes. Oh. There he is, there he is. Doing some job. Um... Aye, so we're going to get Stuart from Second Phase on. He's great on camera, and he's got loads to talk about. So I'm what buzzing. Music, actually. Actually, yeah, that is that is the main thing. There, Stuart's pumping out the tunes just now. So keep an eye out for all things Second Phase. For people that don't know as well, is that the office here is underneath. Stevens and second phase's room. <clears throat> more importantly, it's underneath his room. And more important, my desk specifically. So I hear all the second phase stuff before it hits the market. But you also hear the foot stamping. I hear the foot stomping, keeping himself in time. We've got one of those old school office lights um, right below it. Which his we foot. shouldn't have, should we? It's right we below his foot, actually. So it's like you hear the metal cage. Bang, I've, learned, bang, I've bang. learned to zone it out now. I don't. I don't notice it. See when the two years are going and both lights Aye. are rattling. That's fun. But at the end of the day, it's when I know that there's a lot of productive stuff happening. That at the end of the day, for us to grow the studio and you guys growing as artists, it's it's essential that you're creating music. So mm-hmm. if anything, it actually it warms me up inside. Yeah, of course it does. It's good to see uh, you know plenty of music getting churned totally, out. Totally, totally. So speak, well, speaking of music, yes, so yes. just to, just to why we're still on second phases thing. Um, you've got a remix out, Stuart. Yeah. Yes. Jordan Suckling, Cutsky Surveillance. Yeah. Huge. Nice. Huge. Yeah. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Well, also let's uh, this man here as well. You just did the Ferry Corson yep. remix. I've uh, just remixed um, Edge of the Sky. Ferry Corson. Can't believe I'm I'm saying that. You know, it's your first vocal track. Yeah. Good one to do a remix. How did it come about? Um, I don't know. It actually came about Ferry Corson. How did that one come about? So he'd been supporting in my track Puma. Yes. If you remember Puma, 2015 maybe that was. It was. Um, it and was. then my other one, Underdog, which was on Future Sound of Egypt. And then I played Cream Amnesia with Ferry. Yep. Got a quick chat with him, touched base. Um, they kind of got to know each other a little bit. You know what it's like. I took briefly, a I took you took a picture. a picture. And then two weeks after that, he sent me an email, or one of his guys sent us an email just saying, Look, we're doing a remix album. Do you want involved in it? And uh, here's the four tracks that, you've, that you could potentially remix. And uh, one was a dead mousey type one. Uh-huh. Which I was quite into, into. Mm-hmm. but then we had the vocals of Edge of the Sky and I thought, man, this is more of a challenge. It's a challenge. Um, that's a, that's, let, let's, yeah. let's go with the one that's more of a challenge. And I, yeah. and I took it on, pretty much a big techie remix, with a vocal slapped right on top of it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 130 BPM, it kind of works yeah. um, for that kind of warm up techie sort of vibe, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, it's good. And I tried to make something that Ferry himself would play because I'd heard his set. Uh, and cream. Well, plus you know the sort of stuff he'd been supporting you, so yeah, it's, it's, it's that kind of vibe. To, to go yeah. in with a vibe that maybe you know already gets a bit of support. Yep. Um, no, that it was it was good. It's part of the album. Mm-hmm. I just seen Kieran McCauley's there. Chatted. Kieran McCauley actually. Well. I seen Kieran on the chat there. Hopefully he's still there. If uh-huh. not, um, you need to check that soon. I'll need to check that see if there's any questions, of course. But speaking of music, 
Um, our other good friend, Will yes. Atkinson, has just launched his own uh, record label, which is gigantic news. <laughs> it's I'm sure you've seen the news if you're a fan of Will's. Yes. Um, the record label's called Victim's Helpline. Very apt, quite a quirky name into it. It goes with the whole theme, the whole victim's theme. Definitely um, goes with Will's personality. Absolutely. And the first track on it is a track from uh, Will and Jace called Chickens, which is just I mental. haven't heard any now. I know you uh, well, You guys were away uh, sort of making some music over, over a week, a mm-hmm. few weeks back there, in a cottage sort of in a nice yeah. rural place in Scotland place to get the head down get some new music sorted mm-hmm. and that's what did i take it you heard a couple of clips of the yeah chicken I will, that, was, that was one of the projects that will was working on um Chickens. when we were out there and it's just i'm trying to describe it so i'm working and i've got a lovely view of the loch something quite kind of majestic pads strings and all that and then i hear in the, the back room <laughs> these like kind of cockadoodle doos and just <laughs> like screaming demented chickens like like kind of really distorted, overdrived kind of chicken sounds just going absolutely mental. It sounds like well. Um, and the track's just, it's just nuts. And like chickens just get slapped right in there. You know, you'll, you'll hear it soon enough. So I don't want to give away too much, but it's, no. it, it's, it's wild. What, what a way to start off his label. We launched the label, was it yesterday? The day before? Uh, just the announcement was just yesterday. The announcement, yeah, so yeah. it'll be launched when the... When the track comes. The track comes, out. Because uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing a wee snippet of it. The artwork is insane. It's so ridiculous. Mm. And it's actually what he described about the whole chickens with little laser eyes. Yep. <laughs> so um, it's finally here. I can't wait to hear it. So all the best with that, Will. Um, we'll certainly be tagging him in this. Letting him see. Um, Just getting roast, freezing here. Ro- roasted in here. It's actually... It's actually uh, <laughs> You know, the heater is on. It's still <laughs> yes, it's still dead of winter. So for all of our international listeners, it's actually the struggle is real. The struggle is real in Scotland. Yeah, I'm sitting here with a t-shirt on. I should have a big, massive. Anyway, <laughs> so I, so Will Atkinson, that was good. Um, check that out. There's a there's a big monstrous track coming. Um, yeah. from Will. Lots coming from Will actually. Yeah. Yeah. As always. So absolutely. Do you, do you, absolutely. Would you like to move into something? Yeah, well, then? I think, uh, I think uh, oh, a, check this. A, a good way as well. Yeah, you have a wee check there. Um, today we want to bring up um, sort of talking about aliases. The use of aliases, are they are they worthwhile or not? Um, we always have a debate in here about that. Um, we're always wondering whether it should be done or not because the guys, like like yourself, don't just listen to one style of music. Um, we In here, we all have an eclectic taste of loads of different cool stuff. Um, so sometimes if they want to make a track that's maybe more progressive or techno or stuff like that, is it right to just throw it under your main artist's name? Mm-hmm. Um, probably not once you're more established. Mm-hmm. But this is a debate that's ongoing, isn't it? It's like, or do you bring it all under one roof? Well, I think maybe we can start the conversation from taking it way back to like when dance music kind of first came around. So yeah. you had guys like Sven Vath and John Digweed and Sasha. Mm-hmm. And they all played electronic music. Because that's and, what it is. Do you know what I mean? Like, and then you had Paul Van Dyke come in with a bit more tempo on it. But we're still in that electronic music bracket. They booked on the same bills. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It was a much and more there, mixed there wasn't, flow. And I guess maybe the just the influx and the amount of music has caused all the different genres and, and, and you know the mindset that you can't cross them. Yeah. Which in turn has then created the need for an alias. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But again, music, as we've heard many times, goes in circles. Totally. And maybe we're coming back to a time where you're getting away with playing house techno and trance in a set, mm-hmm. as you're seeing from Carol Cox and Nina Kravitz and stuff. Mm-hmm. They're more just global entities and they don't need an alias. Cause yeah, they're, or a genre. They're wild with it. Whereas you look at an example like Eric Prids, where he's done it very well, splitting off his sounds, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then encapsulates it all in his big epic shows where he plays a set of Series D, he plays Eric Pridd's big anthems, you know. Um, and what's the other one again? It's Eric Pridd's? Prider. 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 Prider, more progressive. 
Um, so that's a great example of of mm. actually working, you know. But he's obviously of the size as well, where he he could just release all under one name, like especially now mm-hmm. that he has built up these other amazing brands, where you know that series D sound, and it's like any time you hear it, it's like some techno banger that's different than any other techno out there, though. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? He's got that sort of driving force with everything. It's just like everything touch just is absolute gold. I know you get just extreme talents in the arts, don't you? Yeah. You get these guys that are just leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else that can just do what they want they've just got that ooze and talent you know and and then you get you know I guess art's like that you know you get your famous composers your Hans Zimmers and all of that and uh, you know your Picassos and then everyone else do you know what I mean it's just that golfing kind of class I just guess some people are Hugely talented at it you know yeah absolutely you were were actually just watching the Hans Zimmer yeah I was was checking out the uh, the Hans Zimmer masterclass Um, aye it's good um, I'm like, what oh man, maybe nine lessons in or something yeah. like that. It's good. It's good to always get a different perspective, especially yeah. someone that's worked in like Jurassic Park and all that. Like, <laughs> that was, uh, uh, no, that's a different no, guy. That's, no, jo- that's, that's jo- John. That's John Williams. John Williams, I uh, Hans Zimmer's and Batman and, you know, all the kind of recent Inception. Yeah, recent the smaller, blog, the smaller like... ones, you know, the kind of B list. <laughs> uh, yeah, the speaking of John Williams, though, that's, he's, uh, he's big. Absolutely. Did you not go and see him? It wasn't him, it was uh, the music of John Williams. Right, okay, uh, okay, okay. I knew you'd done something like that. Yeah. I get confused. I think he's still alive, actually. He John, is. John Williams, aye. Well, I, I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Now, see, one thing I was thinking, do we have any examples of people who haven't done the alias thing and have released everything under sort of one roof? <sighs> That's probably something we should have sorted and, out. And, and spanned. Do you know what I mean? Where they've managed to just work it out in both genres. And I say both genres, usually in, from where we are talking about our standpoint, it's usually... Techno, trance, mm-hmm. house. Mm-hmm. So, but, like, I mean, there's, there's I don't, guys I, out I, there. I can't, I can't think of it. You sure no, you think there's anything? nothing coming to mind. So as soon as you start thinking of one, you, like, you try to think of something you can't no, think about. But, the, I mean, there are, there are artists out there that have started doing one thing and ended up doing another, and it's also up for them as well. Um, <laughs> I'll have, have I. Well, you have, you have released a bit of techno, mm-hmm. is that, under Stephen Kirkwood yeah. as well? But you do, for the more darker, techier stuff, you have got Stefan Woods there. That's sort of your outlet for I that. I think, like, um, you know, it's it's one of those ones, it's a pure hot topic, isn't it? Like uh-huh. this, um, it's like, do you, do you confuse potential promoters if you're making 142 Bang and Trans, but at the same time you love your 128 techno and you release it all under, you know, name. Big Gal? Yeah. You're like, so if a promoter was to come in there and check out your website and that, and then there's one set that's banging trance and they're like well he's not going to fit on at that slot but he's not going to fit on at this slot where does he fit do you know what I mean and there's a lot to be said for humans like finding patterns and things so Mm -hmm. I think it might be the same for artists where you expect a certain sort of flavour from from an artist from a sort of consumer standpoint and from um, a booker standpoint absolutely so you know how to programme a lineup. I think that's like a pro of sticking to yeah, like if, and, and, and creating an alias if you want to do you know mega techno mm-hmm. do you know what I mean if, it depends on your market sense. really doesn't it I think that makes sense I think I, I think I've said to you before as well is like I think as well creating your own sound where there's nothing better when you stumble across an artist that you've maybe never heard of right and then you hear one of their tunes mm-hmm. and you've got it on repeat let's say right you're you've listened to it and you're like, they are mm-hmm. never going to do another tune as good as that. Aye. And then you hear some of the other stuff that sounds similar mm-hmm. and you're like, oh my God, yes, they mm-hmm. followed up with stuff that's similar, Aye. but it's different. But it's different. So I think there's a lot to be said for that as well as having your own unique sound and, and making that tune that mm-hmm. stands out to somebody and they say, oh, I wish I could hear another Puma. And then you listen to Everest. Mm. You're like, Christ, that's like another sort of yeah, Puma. Yeah, it's, it's along mean? those lines. Or it's even like the second phase, guys. They've got that sort of dark techy you know, nailed you, sound that you, you listen yeah. to and you're like... Whether you're releasing techno or trans, uh, tech trans, you're getting that similar flavour. Yeah. Which is good. And you hope that they're going to follow up mm-hmm. one of their tracks, you know, like like the capital or whatever. You hear that and you go, oh, they're never going to make another capital. And then they do. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yes. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So And then it's always feeding the people with the next new thing do you mm. know what I mean that's coming but still having that solid thing Interesting. and I think that's where the alias comes in because I think you're right in terms of a booking standpoint this and that at this point in the game it it makes more sense to have I think two avenues 
mm. and especially for you guys out there as well because you might be sitting there with some really progressive melodic number that's 121 BPM and all the stuff you usually make is like 140 and yeah. you're like I have no idea what to do but with the, this again really the, this comes down to the diversity of the artist a lot of artists themselves are quite tunnel visioned yeah. they only like one style that's true and that's not really going to be a conversation they're going to have with themselves because they're only into one sort of style. Which Any, is a good oh, I'm, and a bad I'm only into minimal. Mm -hmm. Well, f fair enough then. Yeah, that's all you need to worry about. Yeah. Whereas, this is an issue f for us because I grew up on dance music. Yeah, I we just love it literally all. like it all. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like sometimes a, a good house groove can just blow you away, or totally. you know, when it's proper techno, or even when I, I, a proper trance track that comes comes along like that. John Askew recalibrate is an ex excellent example there. Yeah. Don't know why I'm just all over it. It reminds me of what trance should be. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I guess I'm just too diverse sometimes, but that's why we're having these conversations about aliases, you know, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm just I don't think it's a thing as being too diverse. I, I probably worded that uh, wrongly, but it's, it's good to be diverse. It is. But you need to be strategic, I guess. Mm -hmm. If it's too, if you're like, Aye. on one hand you want to release a GABA track and then the other one's a house track, definitely create an alias. <laughs> mm -hmm. But maybe if it is like a proggy thing, it's not too far from trance, you could probably, like, because you've done that with the Future Sound stuff, like with Underdog, Aye. much, much slower than mm -hmm. the typical Stephen Kirkwood sound, mm -hmm. but still went out on a trancey esque label yeah. that can support that, which is perfect for warm up, which totally. we spoke about in last week's. Totally. Excellent. So hopefully, I mean, let's wrap that, that yeah, one up, yeah, and it yeah. kind of leads on nicely to um, getting noticed. As an artist. Because. Obviously, with aliases and, and with creating a sound and stuff, you're wanting to get noticed, aren't you? Like, mm -hmm. uh, as an artist. And I think a good way to kick us off is like listening to what's popular and what you're into. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and aligning a bit to that without conforming fully to someone else's sound, but keep it your own. Uh -huh. But like, you know, work with a specific sound that you like and try and cater your music around that to, you know, kind of build your name up a bit, mm -hmm. you know? I think so. I mean, like, there, there, there's obviously several ways, and like, just talking about aliases there, if you're struggling already to get yourself noticed under your main alias, and then you're thinking, all right, I'm going to start an Aye, do I need yeah. to start a whole new Facebook page? Do I need to now be doing updates? Because I mean, we were having this discussion yesterday, like, when it comes to social media, it is a full time job, mm -hmm. and it is so important which you spoke about in the last video, it is so important to keep relevant, keep, keep stuff updated. Um, and it's a full time job. So now, if you add another alias in, you've got to you're, be committed to actually the sound. You're doubling workload, essentially. You are, but it can be done. It can be done, but you're right in saying if you're you're starting out, which a lot of uh, our market is, or you know, even if you're 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 into this game, you're considering aliases again. It's much easier to build your name or one thing first, first, yes, and then do an Eric Prids when you're just a, an absolute machine in the studio. Uh -huh. It comes down to your studio output as well. You've got to have the music to support two to artists. Essentially, you're, you're needing double everything. You're needing two booking agents if you're in two genres. You're needing, you know, probably one manager to help you, yeah, yeah. Um, to be fair, but different label relationships, different email addresses, websites. It's a lot of work. You're like, you know, poof. And one of the things, I mean, a lot of the clients uh, that come into Escapade, um, especially a lot of guys starting out, it's so, and you know, this is just in general, not even just our clients, like this is worldwide. When someone's just starting out, they always think that their, that their stuff's amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it is just important to actually, like, you know, I get guys messaging me saying, oh, should I start an alias for this? It's like, well, you've not even released one track yet. Yeah. So let's get to that point first. And the thing is, is what you're thinking about all the vessels. Yeah, for. and it's just not even thinking about making music and releasing it. I think that's a big, big point there. Like, a lot of producers fall into the problem of, they're thinking about signing the track when they've not even hit twenty percent through the project. Yeah. Get making music and stop thinking Make about mistakes. the record label yeah. or an alias. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. that's a key point there. You know, and sometimes you know even even guys that come in here are, are guilty of that. You know, thinking too far ahead. Yeah. Start enjoying the, the process. You know, making the music and then. According to the book, everything will fall into place after that. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but well, I mean, it's, there's never rules, of course. But yeah. if you focus on the music, and if it's good enough your agents and your record labels will come for you. Yeah. The thing is as well, it's like music production in general is a very slow burner. Um, even sending away to labels, waiting on replies, things like that, all of it's quite 
takes ages. It takes ages, right? It takes a while. You don't just get a couple of studio sessions and, and, you, and you know how to make a hit. <laughs> you know, it, it, just, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Uh, Hitting a box. Y- uh huh. It, it, it happens like for some people. Some people are just lucky. A big, big lot of this is luck because there is no guarantees in the music scene. What there is a guarantee, though, of, though is, <coughs> is output. Is, is working is learning so for example Stephen's been you know producing for how long and there we're talking about how you were watching Hans Zimmer's masterclass always willing to learn not letting ego get in the way of that learning do you know what I mean and I think a lot of people suffer from their own ego where they're like I'm not getting in the studio with him but there's so much you can actually learn from vibing off other people mm-hmm. it's, got to be, it's got to be the right partnership as well though doesn't it yeah, it's got to be the right people to go in with and very true. And so on. Very, very true. Mm. That's it. And some people work better on their own. That's of course true. Yeah, I prefer uh, working with people. Like I, I get a bit. There's better chemistry. Definitely. It's like that with anything, though. I think you know, two heads working on one thing. Two brains are more powerful than one. You know, absolutely. With, with, with a lot of different things uh-huh. as well. So see, just in terms of other ways of getting noticed, that I, what I've noticed. So we've got the music. Uh huh. We've obviously got music. the music. So the music is a way of getting yourself noticed by releasing top end stuff. Don't tell me that's that gone. Um, we're okay, we're okay, we're okay. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so obviously, releasing music's one massive, massive facet of the whole thing. Um, what about like running a night? Yeah, it can that be good. seems to work well for people. Now, the only thing about running a night is, is you need capital, you need money there to put stuff on. First thing, but yeah. you can start small. Yeah. You don't. I think that is as well. I think so many people when they they launch into running a night. They think, oh, I'm going to need to book Alan Fitzpatrick. Like, you don't. Mm-hmm. You don't need to do that. Start small yep. and grow something. And that's all about doing your research then, isn't it? It's well, about going, right, yep. what's the budget? Where's the venue? What Has there been anything done in that venue before like yep, it? Yep. What's the market like? You know, mm-hmm. what were the nights in there like previously? Mm-hmm. What am I charging per ticket? Yeah, yeah. Spending time researching is, is big for running nights. Uh, if you've not got the... I mean, for both, if you've got capital and if you've not, but in general... It's hard to crack, but Absolutely. it's definitely a way to get noticed. It's, it's a way to get noticed. It's also a way to bring DJs closer to you. Mm-hmm. Because then if you're booking them, then you're physically meeting them. You yeah. have to look after them. Or and also, and... there's a gig swap potential, yep. which is massive. Mm-hmm. You know, So say you're, you're running a night in Paisley or Glasgow, um, and you be strategic, and you find some nights that are on a similar level, mm-hmm. whether like in Germany or France or whatever, drop them a wee email, say, look, I can get you over here. And the chances are they're just you only in another country yeah, yeah. choking to play in Scotland or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's a great way of getting gigs great way of filling up your gig count by, by doing the gig swap thing absolutely getting noticed because then promoters see that like this guy's playing quite a lot here we go mm-hmm. um, and again it's, it brings those artists close to you to network with them because at the end of the day artists big DJs no matter like actors and then they're all people mm-hmm. uh, and they all are mm-hmm. have human needs the same way we do so you know you just treat them as humans yeah. network with them properly and you'll probably find that if, if you're a nice person you'll go on with them well and you know they'll help you out yeah um especially if if you see a dj like for example for us like we, we we've got a pool of djs or producers like to us that are like gods mm-hmm. but they're probably that's not reflected in the scene do you know what i mean they're maybe not as big as what they should be mm-hmm. in our eyes so you as a, a as a, a promoter if you're going to be booking over guys you'll have that feeling about the artists that you're booking because mm-hmm. you love them. Yeah, yeah. Right? So they're, the, they're really good people to network with. Yeah, of course. Because in your eyes, they're already massive. Mm-hmm. They might be still on the climb to try to get to where you think yeah. they are. So they're, they're also good people to know. So a great way, obviously, of getting noticed is running that night, bringing people in yeah. that you enjoy. And it's and also not just... Um, you're actually giving something back to the said person you want to network with. Totally. Facebook and emails and the scene's full of wanting uh, people asking... Can I get, can I get, can I get, can I get, support me, support me, support my track, here's this, download that, without any value given to the person back. Or do they support them back? And it's like, aye, well that's it, you know, so... Can you share my stuff? Well, when was the last time you shared something of mine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well... It's all about lead, leading with the value, and that's what running a night would do. Same thing with running a label. Yeah, that's you, another you, way you of you getting can noticed. Use, you can use a label as a, as a networking tool. Um, uh, as well as a tool to get your music out. Now, not recommended if you're starting out, or even if you're making some waves. Labels are, are things that, I mean, artists usually have, are, are responsible for the weight of the label, aren't they? Mm-hmm. So like, if an artist is doing really well and it's really big, makes sense, mm-hmm. get a label going, you've got that clout, but whereas an artist, it's, 
you know, just getting going. They might be better releasing on other labels to get the exposure up. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Before starting a label, you know, yeah. maybe the label things to be thought about. Can I after you can look at it two different ways. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. you totally can. Because the issue is as well is like nowadays it's become so much easier to DJ. To run a to, label. To run a label, to even produce. Now, that's not to say... But what it's hard, what's hard is to do it well. It's to do it well. It's that's easy. basically what I was getting to there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like it, you can know it all, but right. actually... It's, it's so easy. I mean, I could kick off a label in five minutes. Yeah. But actually executing But it. actually putting the, the, the energy into it is what's hard. MD can make a track, but it's... Whether the track's actually you good see, You see where we're going with that. Yeah, and it's, it's the same as social media. We're talking about aliases. It's you're adding to the workload. Yeah. And then you just start a label, then you've maybe got now three pages to run. Mm -hmm. I you know. know right? you've, uh, you've, got, you've got releases, I mean, you've got artwork to deal with, you've got yeah, for sure. so many things to do. So, I it's easier, but it doesn't actually mean that you're going to do the job well. Mm -hmm. Other ways of promoting yourself then what do you think well we we, we we obviously we spoke about potentially doing like a monthly show um, off the back a radio show release, like a radio show yeah. that, that might be a way now there's sort of two ways to look at it because some radio shows you could be doing them for years they don't really do anything mm -hmm. um, so therefore are, what what is the best format are you better doing it with someone already hosts a show are you better doing your own show where should you upload it how do you how do you promote I it I think the best way to answer this one is, is look at the, the trends for radio shows so where's getting a lot of listening figures um, is it going on to moving more to a Facebook live sort of platform with a nice production behind it then again having said that you're seeing everyone with their phone sticking on a, a set in their bedroom you can see their cupboard all lying open and their clothes all on the floor behind them do you know what I mean mm -hmm. It's not exactly the best looking. No. It's real, it's raw. <laughs> I know. Like, <laughs> mum, mum opening the door, your dinner's ready. <laughs> mum, I'm trying to mix. <laughs> um, you know, so it's all about the production and trying to kind of up your game. You can do obviously an audio show, which can work really well. I mean, also, all the top artists still put a show out on SoundCloud. Um, mm -hmm. And like guys like Gareth Emery made their name on radio shows. Um, what was it, the Gareth Emery podcast or something? And it was literally the podcast at the right moment, the right thing at the right time, kicked off for him and made his name. It shot him through and then he backed up with a couple of tracks. But that was when radio shows was fresh. Yeah, yeah. Nobody was doing it. Mm -hmm. Whereas live now... Live streams is a new radio show. But again, now live streams is like... Oversaturated. Oversaturated, so... Well, that's why we went last year from doing a live stream once a week. We did 52 shows, episode yeah. 50 at the top of the Titan Crane, go and check out on yeah. YouTube somewhere, I don't know, it's not anywhere, but it's somewhere. <laughs> um, we had Will Atkinson play, um, but even for us, we were like, that's too much. Yeah. It was for us now. A lot of people are, are angry at us, and they want us to continue doing it weekly, but it's, it is a lot of work. We've got so much on, and now we want to focus on bigger and better shows well, you know, it's once a, a month. It's allowing us time to do different different things, you know? Yeah, and um, though this this month show is a big one, we've got Liam Wilson in second phase playing. Liam's obviously absolutely smashing it, same mm -hmm. with second phase, so that's yeah. going to be a, a nice night, a sort of techno on trance. Yeah, where can we watch that? Uh, on the Escapade Facebook cool. live stream. Um, the 24th of February, where you're also playing under your alias. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God, yeah. what a tie in. Stefan Woods, uh, well, where can yeah. you play? Yeah, 23rd of February, isn't it? Or is it 20? 23rd. 23rd, sorry, I made a mistake. I think. I made a boo-boo. 23rd's a Friday. That's Entity at SWG3. I'll be there uh, playing under Stefan Woods, so expect Who all the support? tech hey, goodness. Leighton Giordani, who nice. is... um drum code. Yeah, big drum code artist, so, yeah. And we've we'll, also got... We'll get this out before then, so... Who have we got? We've got Gavin Brown from Treehouse, alongside Nico Balducci, friend of ours as well, and then you've got Luca DeSanto and Craig Hughes, yeah. Craig Hughes team member here. And Luca DeSanto recently just had big support from Carol Cox, was on his label. Yeah. Had a big video shouting about him and all that, so that release is doing really, really well, so it's good to see. So it's good to have all the Scottish talent yeah. under one roof supporting Mr. Lindor Denny. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, we'll, we'll wrap it up there yes. then. Um, that's been another episode of Gal and Woo, episode eight. Love doing these, and today we have, I mean, what's the last summary? What have we covered today? So, yeah, today we covered growing yourself as an artist, how to build your... Yeah, how to get noticed, we covered. We also looked into uh, aliases, are they worth it? 
We were also shouting about our good man, Will Atkinson's brand new announcement of his label. Yeah, yeah. of course we did. We also mentioned the second phase. I've got a new track out now as well. It's a remix for Jordan Sutley and Kutsky. Yep. I myself, I've just remixed Ferry Corsten, uh, his album track, Edge of the Sky. Yep. Please check all the, the, the new music coming from the studio yep. out. Yes. So, until next week, we've been Gallon Woo in the yep. show. Remember, subscribe, follow us. Boom, boom. And we'll see you again soon.